these mo I like to call them brisket moments when somebody comes here for the first time and they've um, not had good barbecue before. Yeah. I would say our barbecue is influenced heavily by the Central Texas style, mm -hmm. post oak, wood, and, you know, briskets with salt and pepper rub and that kind of thing. Uh, but we sprinkle in, we drop in some Tex-Mex influences. We're very well known for a sausage link I call chili relleno. I tried it. Yeah, so it's that's really an all, good. all beef link with uh, roasted poblanos, pepper jack cheese. It's got a little Tex-Mex uh, flavoring profile to it. Um, so that's pretty cool. We're also known for dropping in some interesting side dishes, um, most notably our carrot souffle. Um, that's Michelle, my wife Michelle, that's her recipe. Okay. So, um, you know, it's uh, we just kind of build around a classic barbecue menu. This is, uh, these are our two Mobergs out here. This is Donnie and Walter, and then over there is Dude. He was the original. I see the theme. Uh, we just passed our eight year anniversary last October. Okay. Um, so, it's been an amazing ride. We made the Texas Monthly list in the top 10 at number 6 in 2017 and uh, that changed uh, our business forever. Yeah. Um, we started selling out at noon, 1 o'clock every day and um, we only had the one 500 gallon smoker over there we call it Black October um, which is about to get removed and we're going to move Walter and Donnie over there. We're doing a little pit room remodel this, uh, pretty soon. We had to add cooking capacity and um, we started buying these Mulberg smokers and now we're in good shape. Um, we source some of the best ingredients that can be found. For instance, we use uh, Creekstones All Natural, uh, Angus um, for our brisket yeah. and all the other products, um, the pork ribs or prairie fresh all natural or chicken is all natural gap three harvested protein fed chicken okay. um, and it's always been our philosophy is to I mean, barbecue doesn't have to necessarily be a cheap inexpensive meal it can be done with elevated ingredients and um, people seem to appreciate that so that's our niche I, would that's say. Nice. Uh, I personally have been uh, your classic backyard barbecue warrior uh, most of my adult life cooking for the family on the weekend at home and I had started this uh, fascination with bean to bar chocolate back in 2010 and 11 and started roasting my own cocoa beans at home and stone grinding them into a uh, whole process of winnowing and grinding and conching and tempering and molding chocolate into bars okay. and started to build a little hobby business for that. And then uh, I got on this kind of fork in the road with my uh, life career and decided that uh, Michelle and I said we'd try to make chocolate a full-time endeavor and the simple truth was it, you know it wasn't enough revenue from chocolate to pay for facilities and our livelihoods so we could pay our, you know, pay our, pay our mortgage. Right. Um, so we found this old building in Tomball, thought it'd make a great store for chocolate and then looked at the area and so, said you know Tomball has got some barbecue restaurants but I don't have anybody really doing it's what I would call craft barbecue with uh, good meat so and from our days of selling expensive chocolate at the farmer's market, we knew um, there was an audience here um, in the area looking for better food options. So we felt pretty confident that we could sell, we could make barbecue and start to sell it, and mm. that turned out to be the case. So, uh, so now I like to tell people we, we sell barbecue to pay for our chocolate making habit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a fifth generation Texan. Um, I love playing with fire. I'm a closet <laughs> pyromaniac. Um, I just have a fascination with the process of slow smoking meats and um, uh, I like I like proteins more than anything anyway so um, it, and like I said the market here there was a distinct opening or a gap in the industry for something of this level of barbecue around this area so uh, all those things kind of came together. What were you doing before uh, chocolate and barbecue? I was in the railroad industry for um, about 25 years. I okay. uh, worked for a company and originally we sold uh, parts to repair railroad cars and then I left that company after 17 years and started my own uh, distribution and sales agency in that industry and uh, that went well for a while and then it just kind of got pigeonholed into a market that was in decline and had to make a decision about whether I was going to stay in the industry working for somebody else or pursue this culinary idea that we had with chocolate and then adding barbecue. So mm -hmm. um, I was 
a little bit forced into making that decision, and uh, which turned out to be a blessing. The thing about barbecue, everybody has their style. Exactly. Even though we're all cooking similar meats, we all do it to our own style. And you end up building uh, a following of people who appreciate the style Your you bring style. to the table. So. And there seems to be more and more like influences from different, like Vietnamese and Mexican. I mean, I guess Mexican has always yeah, kind of there's been. always been that, you know, especially here in Texas. Yeah. You know, Tex-Mex influence has been around for a long time. And uh, you start to see it more you know, showing up in, more intentionally in, in barbecue. Yeah. Obviously, in Mexico, there's barbacoa and other forms of Monterey grilling and, you know, all those types of things. So barbecue's always, you know, been part of that cuisine. And uh, But now taking smoked meats and mixing them. You know, turning barbecue meats into tacos and quesadillas and uh, empanadas and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you mature as a business and, you know, you overcome some of those early cost hurdles, um, the driving forces become more about are you in the hospitality trade and do you enjoy pleasing people? Uh, I think my favorite moments at the restaurant are when, um, you know, I probably when regulars, are, you see the regulars coming back again and again. I always, I used to say in the railroad industry all the time, nothing says I love you like a reorder. <laughs> so when you see a regulars coming back for more, it, it tells you you're doing something right. So yeah, this has been an explosion because the quality of the food is that good. That's you know, It's not hype or you know, maybe it started off that way, but uh, to sustain itself means that the quality of the product that people are getting has, is, is at that level that they expect. So. Um, and there's more people have learned how to do it, and uh, so it's a, it's a good thing.